Hey, what's up, YouTube? This problem, we're going to determine the open T intervals on which the curve is concave upward or concave downward solution. So it's the second derivative that describes concavity, right? A positive second derivative means it's concave up, and a negative second derivative means it's concave down. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the formulas over here. So if you have dy dx, this is the formula for the first derivative. This tells us the slope, right? It's dy dt over dx dt. And then to find the concavity, we take the derivative of dy dx. So it's the second derivative with respect to x. And this is d dt of dy dx. So of the piece we've already computed over dx dt. It's not so hard to memorize it. It takes some effort. You can think of it as, you can think of this as d dx of dy dx. It's the same thing, right? It's the derivative with respect to x of dy dx. Now check this out. So if you look at this one up here, dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. So it's the derivative of y with respect to x is the derivative of y with respect to t over dx dt. So here, the derivative of dy dx with respect to x is the derivative of dy dx with respect to t over dx dt. So it's like this is your y. You know, it's the same formula, really, right? It really is the same thing. So uh, see, the matching is pretty much, pretty much the same. Okay, so we have to start by working out dy dx. So dy dx using the formula that's dy dt over dx dt. So let's compute dy dt. The derivative of 2t is 2, and the derivative of the natural log of t is 1 over t. So that's dy dt. Again, the derivative of 2t is 2, so it checks. And the derivative of ln t is 1 over t. dx dt is the same thing, except it's plus. It's 2 plus 1 over t. Now, in the next step, we're going to have to differentiate this beast. So I am thinking, to clean this up, we can do something clever, like multiply by t over t. Right? We're multiplying by 1. This is just going to make it easy in the next step. Remember, we have to use this formula in the next step. So if you distribute the t, you're going to get 2t, right? Because t times 2 is 2t. And then distributing it here, they cancel, so you just get minus 1. Do the same thing on the bottom, and you're going to get 2t plus 1. Good stuff. All right, now we have to compute the second derivative. Okay, the second derivative. So the second derivative of y with respect to x. Okay, this is going to be d dt of this beast, 2t minus 1 over 2t plus 1 over dx dt, but we already computed dx dt. In fact, we can just do it again, right? It's 2 plus 1 over t, right? Just the derivative of x with respect to t, so 2 plus 1 over t. In the numerator, we have to use the quotient rule. So um, let me show you how I do the quotient rule. Um, if you have f over g and you take the derivative, I think of f as the first or top piece, g is the second or the bottom piece, so it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom one squared. So in this case here, this is your f, right, 2t minus 1, and your g is 2t plus 1. So the derivative of the top is just 2 times the bottom minus the top, so 2t minus 1, whoops, times the derivative of the bottom, so 2 all over the bottom one squared. So that would be um, 2t plus 1 quantity squared. And that's all over, oh yuck, <laughs> 2 plus 1 over t. I really hope this cleans up nicely. Um, I haven't done this problem yet, so should be interesting. Let's check that. The derivative of the top is 2, right? And then times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. Yep, all over the bottom one squared. And then we have dx dt in the bottom. We want this to be positive, so we're going to have to set this greater than zero at some point um, because we want it to be concave up, and, and we want to also see where it's negative so uh, we can figure out when it's less than zero as well. So, yeah, I forgot we have to find both concave up and concave down in this problem, not just not just one. 
So 2 times 2t two, uh, is 4t. So you have 4t. Uh, and then here we have 2. Okay. Then here we have minus 4t. So minus, oh, that's nice. They cancel the 4t's. And then be careful here. It looks like it's negative and negative, so it's positive. So plus 2. That's all over, all over this here, 2t plus 1 quantity squared. And this is all over 2 plus 1 over t. Okay. Let's clean this up some more. These cancel. Okay, 2 plus 2 is 4. So it looks like we're going to get uh, 4 over 2t plus 1 quantity squared. This piece down here is really bugging me. We can, bothering me, <laughs> we can rewrite this, right? We can rewrite this. We can write 2 plus 1 over t. You can multiply this by t over t. And you can write this as 2t plus 1 over t. Let's do that. So this is 2t plus 1 over t. Right, it's the same thing. And now we're dividing. So when you divide, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So this is 4 over 2t plus 1 quantity squared times, oh, this is nice, t over 2t plus 1. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Because those are the same, right? You can combine these. So now we get a nice value for our second derivative. So the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 4t over, and then we have 2t plus 1 cubed. It's a good feeling, right? Because if you've never done a problem before and you get something nice like this, you know, you feel like, yeah, yeah things are working out. So you want to see when this is positive and negative. Uh, so th this will change signs uh, two possible places. It'll change signs when um, it's equal to 0 or when it's undefined. So we should look at where this is when is it equal to 0? And when is it undefined? It's kind of like uh, in Calculus 1 when you're checking for concavity. You know, you, you take the second derivative, you set it equal to 0, and then you look to see where it's undefined. Same thing here, right? So you set it equal to 0. If you have a fraction equal to 0, you can automatically set the numerator equal to 0, right? You could multiply both sides by 2t plus 1 cubed. So you get 4t equals 0. So t equals 0. So this is the possible place where um, the concavity will change. Another possible place is where it's undefined. If you set the bottom equal to 0, that's where it's undefined, right? And you can subtract 1 and divide by 2. So negative 1 half is another possible place uh, where this is undefined. Let's go back, though, and look at the original question, because I, um, I think something is going on here with the t. Yes, 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 yes. You see here, t cannot be negative, and it cannot be 0, because we have a natural log. Right? So in this problem, the domain of t is positive numbers only. So in, in particular, in particular, that means none of this can happen. Right? None of this can happen. In fact, since t is positive, if you have 4t over 2t plus 1 cubed, that would mean that t is positive, so the top is positive, and 2t is positive, so if you add 1, it's positive, so it's positive over positive. This whole thing is positive, so this is always concave up. And it would be on 0 infinity because t is positive. Again, uh, we, we did this work. right? We got t equals negative 1 half, t equals 0. The next step would have been to plot these on a number line and pick test points. However, um, it's important to keep in mind that in the original question, we had natural logs. right? And that means that t has to be positive. right? Remember, the, the graph of the natural log uh, only allows for positive numbers. Right? It looks like this. So it has a vertical asymptote at 0, and the graph of ln looks like this, right? This is ln t, right? So it only allows for positive t's. So all of our choices here are useless, <laughs> and this fraction will always be positive when t is positive. Therefore, it's concave up on 0 to infinity. That's it. I hope this video has been helpful.